Alright guys, we're back at it again with some more of AI the Somnium Files. After going through a couple of the routes we keep revisiting, we're now going through different paths and now unlocking other new ways to continue on and try to solve this puzzle and mystery that we're going through. So hopefully we continue on knowing some new things and, you know, we're just gonna keep on keeping on. So let's get right back into it. Alright everyone, and we are back. Blessing at our desk. All right. I'm gonna have this line of sight. Anyone else here? Oh, we can talk to I buy. I forgot. The bot ranger. Mizuki went to Bloom Park three nights ago. She was prompted by a Nile message from Renju. Mizuki, daddy got caught up in something serious. Please come to Bloom Park's merry-go-round right away. There are three possibilities. One, Renju killed Shoko, or was an accessory to the murder. Two, Renju was threatened or blackmailed into luring Mizuki to the scene. Three, the culprit used Renju's phone to send the Nile message. In any case, the motive is still unknown. We need to talk to Renju. Renju, where did you go? Hmm, where is Renju? You asked Mama at Marble for information regarding Renju Okiura, correct? It is possible she may have something for you by now. I asked Mama for information too, but I had to promise him a meeting with Iris. Mama can wait for now. We can talk to Iris's mom as well. She was Renju's classmate, right? Iba told me about her. The dream changing reality. It is absurd. Not possible. Dreams are figments of the imagination. An incident which took place entirely in your mind cannot have any bearing on the real world. That is preposterous. Consider it. If you were to find money in your dream, does your bank account balance go up in reality? Unfortunately not, but that would be very nice. If you were to be attacked by aliens in your dream, does a swarm of UFOs invade Earth? But at the warehouse, I... You must have been hallucinating. Within Mizuki's Somnium, you saw Iris's frozen corpse. It is affecting your mental state. Last night, you were so phased by it that you couldn't speak. If it bothers you to this degree, why not go talk to Iris? Maybe I will. <clears throat> her cell phone is on. I can trace her via GPS. She is currently somewhere in the Lemniscate building. About Okiara Fishery. I have done some research. As the name suggests, the company is owned by the Okiuras. The same Okiuras we know, Renju's father created the company. Another connection to Renju. No, actually. Currently, Okiura Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Renju holds no shares and is not involved in the management. In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father, and it was instead given to other persons. But it can't be a coincidence. It certainly is suspicious. I would suggest searching the warehouse again. You may be able to discover why Iris was resurrected. There are four people I should talk to. So Sejima, Iris and Hitomi Sagan, and Mama. And I need to check the warehouse one more time. We have many avenues of investigation. Let's get moving. All right, Seji yeah, sorry. Sejima residence it is. So Sejima is a key person of interest in this case. Earlier, the boss cited three points of suspicion against him, and I agree with her assessment. I checked the call logs of So's phones. Congressman Sejima has one phone under his name, and a burner phone rented under a fake name. 
Did you find anything interesting? Unfortunately, no. Really? But I do have something. I looked into So's secretary's phone. One call in particular stood out to me. Huh? It was one week ago, from Fuchu Prison. The caller identified themselves as inmate number 89. Number 89? Yes. This is most likely the same person who called HQ. I know who killed Shogun Adami. You're gonna have to excuse the knocking, guys. I don't know what my neighbor's trying to do. Alright, what's he in jail for? What's number 89's name? Who is number 89? What's the relationship? Unknown. You would have to ask Mr. Sejima for that information. Number 89 said he knew who killed Shoko. He did, but that may be a lie. Does he have any connections to the Cyclops serial killings? Unknown. In all honesty, I have no idea. Hmm. What's his name? Unknown. You don't know? He is not registered in any databases. He could be a foreigner or recent immigrant, but it would be impossible to determine from where. However, I did not detect any accent in his speech. I believe we can conclude that he grew up in Japan. What's he in jail for? Murder. He is serving a life sentence for multiple counts. Ooh. He was imprisoned six years ago. Six years ago? From what I can determine, he is an assassin. He accepts jobs from the criminal underworld for substantial rewards. His code name is Falco. Falco? Correct. Every time he gets that heartbeat, it makes me think that he like... Deep down he knows something or he can't explain why either. Probably something to do with his lost memories. Number 89. Probably selectively blocked it out before whatever traumatic experience happened to him. Should we visit Fuchu Prison? No, we don't have time. Call up boss. Tell her to request mm -hmm. that number 89 be brought to Abyss. Roger. All right, Sejima Residence, Monday. I heard there was no body found at the cold storage warehouse. Isn't your investigation over? Far from it, buddy. Let's see, about Iris. How many times do I have to tell you? I don't know that girl. I've never seen her before. Date. I knew he was lying. This proves it. I am having difficulty determining his motive for lying. After all, Iris was not killed. Maybe he's got a secret with her he doesn't want us knowing. What are you hiding so? Why did you call Shoko? You are beginning to irritate me. What did you want to talk to her about? What is the private matter you mentioned? What is your relationship with her? I'll answer your questions when you present a warrant. <sighs> Why were you at the warehouse? I told you, I will not answer that question. And why not? We didn't find anything there. There's nothing to hide. It appears that he will not respond. Alright, what about number 89? Number 89? Who is that? An inmate at Fuchu Prison. He used to go by Falco. He was an assassin. Odd, finding such a person in Japan. What about him? About a week ago, he called your secretary. I don't know anything about that. He was probably calling for a pardon or some such nonsense. My secretary probably decided it wasn't worth my attention. If you need information, you can ask her. I can't help you. Haven't you people got enough? I'm very busy, excuse me. Oh, actually, I do have one more thing to tell you. To be honest, Kaname Date, I don't like you. I don't like you either, dude. I don't ever want to see you again. Well, too bad. You will later. 
Well, technically, you know, you saw me plenty of times in other, uh, <laughs> scenarios. So I suggest that you don't show your face here anymore. Oh, that's not gonna happen, buddy. It's what's best for both of us, understand? Ah, so he's scared of someone else. Behind the scenes. So walked away sternly. Who does this guy think he is? Date, your blood pressure is skyrocketing. Any higher could kill you. <sighs> Relax, Date. We still have much to do. I know, I know. <laughs> Alright, let's go marble for now. We're not getting nothing from so. You need more info on Ren? Yeah, I'm yes sorry to waste your time, but I don't have anything for you. Oh, no. I see. You know about Renju and the Kumakura gang, right? Yeah, I know. I heard it from his own mouth right here. Do they have anything to do with the talent scandal at Lemniscate? Maybe now they do, since Renju is the president of Lemniscate. But even before that, Renju and the Kumakuras go way back. All the way back to high school. Hey, Date. Have you ever seen a dead body? I remember uh, Renju saying that to me after he and I went to a bottle. I almost said Senju instead of Renju. You're a policeman. I don't know what department, but I assume you aren't handing out traffic tickets. So, how about it? I didn't answer. I turned the question around on him. What about you? Me? Well, yeah. Not just one. Countless bodies. When I was in high school, I had a pretty crazy job. You know the Kumakura gang? I was hooked up to one of their phone fraud scams. I just had to go collect the money from drop points and give it to the Kumakuras. It was an easy job. Eventually, I became friends with the higher-ups. They started taking me with them on jobs. What jobs? The target was always an elderly person from the country with no family. Elderly folk who owned a lot of land, you know? They live every day in loneliness and desperation. You just have to be nice to them. That's all it takes. Guys would get to know the old people and they would set up an adoption process. After that, you just have to get them really drunk, throw them in the tub full of hot water, and they pass. Just like that. Heart attack, brain hemorrhage, or they simply go to sleep and drown. The police almost never investigated. It always looked natural, like they died of old age. So the adopted gang members would inherit the land. Then we sell it and make massive profits. I watched a lot of people get killed like that. And I've seen journalists get killed for getting too close to the truth. So I... I... <laughs> Why am I telling you all this? <sighs> Are you going to arrest me? I took a sip of my glass. I didn't say anything for a while. You didn't do it yourself, right? No, I was always the lookout. But still... Date, I... Tears fell to the counter on ending. We didn't say another word until the ice in the glass had melted to nothing. <clears throat> Alright, why are you always brushing that fish? How's it going? How about number 89? Oh, Falco? You know him? I know him as a famous assassin in the underworld. Just rumors, though. Nothing specific. What kind of rumors? Mmm, he's good. 100% success rate. No evidence. He was a world-class killer. Did you ever meet him? Nope. I don't even know what he looks like. Any other info? I know he's connected to the Kumakuras somehow. Them again. Well, that's about it. Alright then, summarize for me. 
I don't have anything else for you. Sorry, I'm not much help. No, don't worry about it. Can you come back again tonight? There's a regular here who is good friends with Ren. They should be here tonight. If you ask him, he might have some information for you. Tonight? Yes. I'll be waiting for you. Alright, time to get out. And now we're visiting Iris's uh, home. Saga. I apologize for yesterday. I arrived uninvited. No, I'm grateful. Thanks to you, Mizuki has her voice back. No, I didn't do anything. You did pretty much a lot. It's Monday, isn't it? A school day? Where's Renju? What ours? <laughs> Today's a holiday. I suppose there's never a day off for a detective. Oh, but you aren't a detective, right? Technically, yes. But I still deal with crime. I see. Today is a holiday. You forgot too, didn't you? I've put Iris through so much. I was 19 and single when she was born. People didn't take kindly to that. But Iris was such a fighter. She always protected me. I remember, one time at the nursery, some of the other mothers were talking about me. Iris ran up to them and said, don't talk about my mommy. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the mother, but it's Iris who's always protecting me. Hmm. Where's Renju? Did something happen to him? You asked me that yesterday. There's no point in hiding it. I told her about Renju's disappearance. Right from the hospital? I'm sorry. I have no idea. What about your parents? They died when I was 17. I was an orphan, and my relatives lived far away. It might have taken me in, but I was already in my second to last year of high school. It wasn't a good idea for me to move that late. So I decided to stay here, by myself. And take care of Iris. Yes, all alone. But Renju would help sometimes. It was always just me and her. Vacations, barbecues, zoos, amusement parks. Just me and her. Oh, that reminds me. When Iris was five, there was a children's theater show in Bloom Park. It was called Milky Moon. It was about girls as magical space rangers and such. She loved singing and dancing. Even as a kid, whenever she heard music, her body would start moving. It was a quirk of hers. And she did it at the show, too. Toward the end, when all the Milky Moon girls were dancing to the ending song, Iris climbed up onto the stage and danced with them. I tried to stop her, of course. I grabbed her arm and tried to get her to sit, but before I knew it, she was up there, dancing. And everyone was so excited. Even I was dancing by the end of it. When it was over, she had the biggest smile on her face. Mama, you're a good dancer. That's the kind of girl she was. Whenever she sees someone playing music on the street, she'll run up and join them, right then and there. Music at the train station, the crosswalk beeping, even at convenience stores. When their little chime played, she would start dancing. It almost got her into trouble once. She was on the jungle gym and a truck drove by. It was playing loud music out the windows. She climbed up to the top and started dancing, but she lost her balance and fell. She fractured her leg pretty badly. It was on a Sunday, and it was hard to find an open emergency care. I was carrying her on my back, running and running through town. I could still hear her crying. Will I still be able to dance, Mommy? Can I still dance? She cried and cried into my shoulder. It was the only time she ever cried so much. Uh, no, um, that's not true. 
There was one other time. Hmm, what was the other time? He told me he's touching her right shoulder with her left hand. Six years ago, I was the victim of a shooting. After the surgery, Iris came in running. And she was sobbing. Mommy, don't die! Don't die! <laughs> Please don't die, Mommy! Don't die! <laughs> I swore to myself then. I would protect her, no matter what. Iris is everything to me, more important than my own life. Hmm. I've been wondering about that picture. Iris drew it when she was 12. That's you on the left and Iris in the middle, correct? Yes. And who's on the right? The man I was dating at the time. It was only for three months, but... But summarize for me then. Iris must really enjoy dancing. Yeah. Though her drawing skills could use some work. Drawing skills? Look at the drawing on the wall. I met him about six years ago. Have you been to the Ikume Shrine in the Minato district? Why, yes, I have. I was praying there one day and I heard a voice. Well, more like a groan. Behind the shrine, I saw a man sitting on the ground. He was bleeding badly from his stomach. I took out my phone to call an ambulance, but... He grabbed my wrist, and he held me, and then... He... He kissed me. That sounds like... That sounds more forceful than romantic. I was shocked, but... When I stared into his eyes... Then I heard footsteps, and then a bunch of men yelling. They were looking for him. When the voices and footsteps faded, he let me go. Don't call an ambulance, and don't call the cops. I knew he had to be a criminal, so I took him to an underground clinic I knew. You took him to a mob doctor? Renju's friend. I only met him once. It's a very weird thing for you to do, lady. The drawing on the wall looks interesting. Also, oh, we keep going, huh? Okay. Even though we had our first kiss seconds after meeting each other, it took a long time before I got to see him again. The first time we held hands was when we watched a horror movie together. The first time I took his arm was when we went to a haunted house in an amusement park. <laughs> but I wasn't the one who grabbed him. A zombie jumped out and scared us, and he clung onto my arm. He had that cute side to him. And I was falling in love. Our second kiss was in the car. It's cliche, I know. But we drove around at night, looking at all the lights. We parked our car near a warehouse and kissed. Wait a second. Which warehouse? I don't think we ever said I love you, but we both knew. We were getting closer and closer. I introduced him to Iris about a month after I first met him. Iris never had a father figure in her life before. She warmed up to him immediately and treated him like a real dad. From then on, it was always the three of us together. We would go to the beach, to the river, the zoo, the amusement park. Going to barbecues with another person was a new experience for me and Iris. Everything felt so fresh. Every day was so exciting. Oh, sorry. You asked about the picture. Man, that was a long go around before coming back to the, <laughs> the picture itself. He wanted to make Okonomiyaki one day. He was working with the hot plate. It was ridiculous. He was trying to flip one, and it flew up in the air and landed right on my head. Iris saw the whole thing and laughed and laughed. I hadn't seen her laugh like that in a long time. I was having so much fun that I put an Okonomiyaki on their heads, too. Flop, flop. I added the bonito flakes and mayo and sauce. 
At this point, there was no going back. Eggs flew, flour going everywhere. The room was not a pretty sight. After our battle, we laughed like crazy. We were rolling around on the floor. So Iris decided to draw it. It's nostalgic. Oh man, we still gotta look at that drawing. It's never ending. But those days didn't last. Six years ago, in November, a man with a gun broke into our house. Fortunately, Iris wasn't home at the time, but my boyfriend was. That's why the gunman came. He wanted to kill him. He wanted to kill him and he would never stop. He pulled the trigger. I tried to protect him. The bullet hit me, but the police arrived. They were both arrested and incarcerated. Why was he after your boyfriend? Why do I have a feeling Date is the shooter? <laughs> Before he met me, he committed some terrible crime. I don't know the details, but it was awful. So he became a target for underworld criminals. I don't know exactly why, but I know that he betrayed them in some way. May I ask you something? Of course. I had heard that that incident was a random break-in gone wrong. Oh, that's not true. I lied about it at the time because of Mizuki. Mizuki is Iris's friend. If she found out, Iris would find out too. I didn't want Iris to know. Know what? That I was dating a criminal. He was her father figure. Iris looked up to him. If she found out about his past... There's a drum on the wall. Iris drew it when she was 12. Alright, so now we can finally sum have her summarize. Date, we can't spend time reminiscing. We have to get moving. Yeah, let's go. Alright, it looks like we're done here after that long... Well, you know, it wasn't all pointless. Like, we now know that she went on a date with this dude to places that we need to go to or investigate in the first... <laughs> in the first place anyway. Okay. Further into... Let me escape. I am so aggro right now. Who says that? Why are you angry? She does, apparently. You backed out on your Shovel Forge promise. I didn't make any promises. You promised me a date, though. I did go to your house. Two minutes before midnight, and you didn't even take me anywhere. <laughs> yeah, because we only had two minutes. We could have gone somewhere. Iturup, Kunashir, Shikotan, Habomai? Absolutely not. Then you should have come earlier. Well, uh... I like how Date sounds so exasperated. Alright guys, this seems like a good uh, stopping point for now. I'm going to end the video here for today. Thank you all for watching. So far, we've learned a lot from visiting mainly Iris' mother actually. And we're going to learn more when we start talking to her next. So if anything else, thank you all for watching. Until the next one.